You know that conversation you need to have? The one that you keep putting off because you really just don't like conflict, but it just sends pangs of anxiety into your stomach and uh, you wish you could approach it, but frankly, you just avoid it. You avoid the conversation, you avoid stating the obvious because you want to avoid conflict and confrontation at all costs. I ran across a concept recently from uh, author Dr. Marilee Adams that I thought was so interesting. Um, and basically, she made a distinction between the idea of destructive conflict, which basically causes most people to feel a lot of fear and anxiety and for a lot of people to simply avoid conflict at all costs, and constructive conflict which really is the process of moving towards a problem with enough courage to talk it out, to present what you want, to look at the perspective of the other side of the problem, and to really seek out a win-win solution. You know, if you look at all conflict as being destructive, then of course you feel fear because you feel like if you address the conflict, really things are going to get worse and not better. That perhaps people are going to see you in a way that is negative now if you address the issue. Um, that it has to devolve into an argument or a fight of some sort and too much discomfort for you to even consider handling. And if you see conflict that way, if you always see it as destructive, then you are always going to be more likely to avoid it. Which means you end up stuck. You end up dealing with circumstances that are inauthentic for you, you end up putting up with things that you don't want to put up with. So I want to challenge you this week to see conflict potentially as constructive, that confronting an issue and doing so with wisdom, um, with a sense of respect and neutrality, not as an accusatory approach, but as really approaching the problem as though maybe you could collaborate, collaborate and actually come up with a solution. So I have a few questions that I want you to ask yourself as you consider that conversation that you need to have but you've been avoiding, all right? So the first question is this, if I take the emotion out of the situation, what is the core issue? You know, a lot of times we get so caught up in our emotions that we don't address the core issue. We go down rabbit trails, we start talking about things that really aren't relevant to the core issue. And if we can just take a breath and take our emotion out of it, we can get to the core issue, which leads to this next very important question, which is, what do I want? In that situation you've been avoiding, what is it that you really want? If you can get crystal clear about that, it becomes a lot easier to answer this next question, which is how could I go about achieving that outcome? If you really just let all the other stuff, all the distractions completely just kind of go to the wayside, you can then begin looking at the core issue, what you would like to see change, and how you could possibly go about making that happen. Here's the next question. What is the other side of this conflict? And why does it, it exist for them, from the other person's perspective? So it's very easy for us to only look at things from our own perspective, but I can tell you it's very, very powerful in a conversation where you are at odds with someone to simply affirm and acknowledge what they are thinking and feeling. When we're able to say, you know what, I. I understand this is what you feel, or these are your thoughts. If we're able to say that with it not devolving into negativity or accusations, we're respecting that the other person has a perspective too. And they have a right to their perspective because their perspective is based on their own life experience or whatever it is that they happen to be dealing with and what their wants and goals are. So when we acknowledge that, even if we don't agree with it, we're saying, I hear you, I'm listening to you. And so here's the next question you want to ask yourself. What is the other side or what does the other person want? We have to be really clear about that. Sometimes what we think they want is very different from what they actually want. 
sometimes we don't even realize we're in conflict with people because what they really want is respect or to be heard. And when we give them that, we find some sense of common ground and a way forward to actually begin discussing the real issues and coming up with real solutions. So here's the last question. What, uh, based on what the other side wants, what are a few potential options for a win-win solution? What are a few potential options for a win-win solution? Now, sometimes you do have people that are so extreme that there's no coming to a win-win. But most people aren't that extreme. If we are willing and courageous enough to face the conflicts that scare us and to have those difficult conversations, we can get unstuck. We can find a way forward. And I believe that's what all of us are called to do. The reason that that conflict is bothering you, the reason it's creating stress and anxiety is because there's something you need to do about it. So think of conflict not simply as destructive, but find ways to have constructive conflict, being courageous enough to move forward and have those difficult conversations that ultimately allow you to start peeling back the layers and having authentic conversations about how to move forward. If you want more life strategies, you can visit me on my blog. It's simply ValerieBurton.com forward slash blog. I'll talk to you next time.